Welcome everybody to a snowy South Orange, New Jersey for today's college women's basketball matchup on the Big East Digital Network. David Goss and Kim Adams joining you as the Seton Hall Pirates at 11 and 7, 4 and 3 in Big East play, host the Providence Friars at 9 and 9 and 0 oh and 6 uh, in Big East play. Don't forget, we everyone, can't I'm David and this is Kim and Kim. Well, don't it might be innocuous, just a Sunday afternoon Big see, East game. There's no Dallas. such thing for Providence. They've been within a possession okay. in the fourth quarter, five of their six Big East games, no wins. This is a huge one. But on the flip side for Seton Hall, a big win on Friday, but they need to show they can maintain that momentum. Right, Seton Hall, very important weekend for them. They came in tied for sixth. A win today could put them as high as third, and you said it, a huge game for them on Friday, but consistency has been their issue. So can they follow up that with a win today? As for Providence, every game has been close, so they are desperate Three, to get that first conference ten. win. And if they're going to get to that victory, yeah. it's going to be Andrea on the back of Mary Baskerville, who has been their star yeah. player in the front court. Yeah, she's going to have a size advantage down low, David. She leads this team in scoring, rebounding, and blocks. She shoots the ball okay. at a very high percentage. So they're going to have to play through her because okay. she really shifts the defense. So even if she's not the one scoring, they want to get it to her often to really shift that defense and open up some other opportunities. And how about Seton Hall, Alexis Lewis? She had been in a bit of a shooting slump, but she and really the whole team found that scoring ability again. What do you think of her? Uh, freshman. Yeah. She's pretty like steady for a freshman point guard. Two of the best three-point shooting teams in the conference. We expect it to be bombs away. We'll be back in just a moment with your first half action here on the Big East Digital Network. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power gun. Welcome everybody back to Big East Women's College Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. David Gossett, Kim Adams with you. And Kim, you take a look at this game for Providence. 0-6, so you're always going to try and find some answers and with some injuries, some changes into the starting lineup for Coach Crowley's team. Right. They have two players out today who have been mainstays in the starting lineup. Olivia Orlando, who's really their veteran leader, as well as Kira Spiewak, who is one of their better outside shooters. Both of those players out with some sort of foot or ankle injury. We haven't received the full injuries, but they're both in boots and sweats on the bench. And for Seton Hall and their starting lineup, well, why change anything, right? They came out with a 19-2 run to start the last game against Creighton, Barbara Johnson, Lauren Park Lane in the backcourt with Alexis Lewis, who led the team in scoring, and the frontcourt of Shadeen Samuels and Desiree Elmore for the Pirates. Shadeen Samuels and Baskerville to take the tip. Baskerville will be joined by Heaven Bristow in the front court as we are tipped off and ready to go. Andrea Cooper as well in the front court and Kayla Webb and Erlette Scott in the back court as Kayla Webb gets us started. The sophomore out of Michigan will lead the point for this Providence Friars team. I mentioned it a little bit off the top, Kim. 0-6 in Big East play for this Providence team but they've been within a possession, if not leading in the fourth quarter of five of their six Big East games. It's just always been something different. How do they get over the hump here today? Yeah, well, they've, they've had some growing pains. All of their Big East losses outside of DePaul have been by 10 points or less. So they need to put together a full 40 minutes, not have a good 30, a good 35 minutes, and then let the game slip away at the end. Uh, in that loss to St. John's on Friday, they really struggled to shoot from three, just two of 13. So they need to find some better outside shooting today, David. They were tied at halftime against St. John's, led in the third quarter, but a 7-0 run from St. John's as the shots dried up for Providence, really put them behind the eight ball as Lewis has sees her first shot miss. Alexis Lewis, 18 points, seven rebounds in the win over Creighton here on Friday, played all 40 minutes as Baskerville gets a first bucket of the game. 
we mentioned that height advantage she's going to have. She is 6'2". Seton Hall forward's a little bit undersized, so they're going to start off single coverage on her, and we saw a nice, easy lob in over the top of the defense to start the game. Elmore outside to the Big East preseason player of the year, Samuels, and Lewis knocks down her first three of the game. Seton Hall really found their outside shooting on Friday versus Cree, and they had come in shooting a really low percentage in Big East play, and then they made six of their first six here on Friday at Walsh. It was an explosion early on as Barbara Johnson swipes this one away, looking to go coast to coast, and she puts it in for a three-point lead for the Pirates. And that's really the identity of this Seton Hall team. They force 20 turnovers a game. They are athletic on the perimeter. They're going to look to be out in passing lanes, and that was a key for Coach Bazella. Turning, turning them over and getting out for easy looks and transition. Providence came into Big East play as the second best three-point shooting team in the nation. The shots have dried up in conference play as this one's battled, and Johnson off to the races once again. Set out to the freshman Park Lane. Back into the hands of Johnson, who goes for three, but she can't get that one to fall. One of the things Coach Bazell spoke to you a lot about before the game, though, was tempo early on in favor of the Pirates. Absolutely, and a lot of their ability to get out in transition comes from rebounding on the defensive end. And early on, we've seen them limit Providence to just one shot opportunity, and that's allowed them to get out and run. Lewis has it tipped by Baskerville. Elmore able to recover it. Lewis fires again. That one halfway down. Talk about confidence, though, early on. All right, she certainly got her confidence back in that last game. She had been coming off the bench, and then due to the injury, she was back in the starting lineup. And really scored from everywhere on the floor in that game, not just from three, where she likes to shoot it a lot from. Baskerville draws the contact, and it'll be and one, as Baskerville will go to the line. She has all four points so far for the Friars. That was a close one. I thought that could have gone the other way. I think it was Desiree Elmore there. I thought she had good position. I thought Baskerville dropped that shoulder a little bit. Checking in before this shot, Chanel Williams and Alyssa Geary. Geary, a player we thought would start in this game, comes off the bench early. This Providence team, they, they're deep. They play a lot of players, obviously, today, a little bit of a tighter rotation with two of their main players out with injuries. But Geary right away brings in a lot more size down low. Chanel Williams, one of four members of this Providence team from New York City, as well as Niaja Franklin from just down the street in East Orange, New Jersey, as Elmore knocks down the two-point jumper. And Elmore, she is a tough matchup. She can post up down low. She can show the range as she did there, and she has really been playing well, a complete game for this Pirates team as of late. Elmore averaging over 14 points a game for Seton Hall, helped carry them a little while Shadeen Samuels was out early in the season with an injury. Continuing to play strong, the corner three. That one off the mark from Erlette Scott. And Samuels with the turnover the other way. It's tipped, though. Goes off the hand of Andrea Cooper. Good tempo to this game early on. And now our head officials, Norma Jones and Keith Miller, discuss. And they'll go back the other way to Providence. Be their possession once again, led by Scott. I'd like to see them keep working it into Baskerville. Right now she's out a little bit. We'll see a little high-low action maybe with her and Geary. You see a clear size advantage she has down low on Desiree Elmore. Lewis trying to help Elmore a little in the post, and now to the hands of Williams. Williams with the elbow jumper. Rattles around, Elmore brings it down. And again, the Pirates really strong start on the defensive glass, limiting them to one opportunity. Huge block there from Geary. Lewis tried to take it inside. Williams now pushing the other way. Baskerville, and she will get called for the travel. Jim Crowley can't believe that one. I'm with him. I thought that was just a little bit of a, a step through there. Coming off the bench here for Providence, Sophia Widmeyer, sophomore out of Canada. 
Already three substitutions made by Providence. Not a single one from Seton Hall. Shows you a little different how these coaches are operating. Yeah, Jim Crowley likes to mix it up. And as a defense, you have to make sure you're on your toes. You know your scout who's coming in, who can shoot. And the crowd on their feet for the first and one of the game. Seton Hallway, and who else? The Big East preseason player of the year, Shadeen Samuels. When I talked talk to Coach Mazzella on Friday before that Creighton game, and the big thing for him was really looking for consistency out of Shadeen Samuels. She didn't have a great weekend out in the Midwest against Marquette and DePaul. She had a great all-around game on Friday. Now he really wants to see, can she consistently put together a second great game and even elevate her level of play moving forward. And that Midwest trip, the toughest in the Big East still, with DePaul nationally ranked in Marquette. Last year's reigning Big East champion as that one gets knocked out. It was a tough trip for Seton Hall as well, but they are trying to turn things around at home. A Friday win over Creighton and a five point lead right now in the middle of the first quarter here at Walsh Gymnasium. We'll be back in just a moment with more Big East action on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching Seton Hall Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. You have four years to help you figure out the meaning of life. Do you realize what a great gift this is? I think of college as a moment of pilgrimage. You'll go places you never thought you'd go. You'll meet people you never thought you'd meet. And you will experience things that are so rich that you can hold on to them forever. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. Welcome back, everyone, to Historic Walsh Gymnasium. Big East Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. David Goss and Kim Adams here for this one. And we look at these two teams. It's been some tight matchups over the last few years. All of them a one possession game going late into it. And Kim, for Providence, the last few years, it's been strong steps under Coach Crowley going into last year where they won their most Big East games in 20 years and a WNIT appearance. Yeah, he's definitely moving the program in the right direction. Right now, they're just experiencing some growing pains. They lost two prolific scorers last year in Yo Yo Nogich and Maddie Jo Lynn. And this is still a really young group, a talented core of freshmen and sophomores. So they're kind of learning the hard way right now how to score consistently without those two senior leaders from last year. Only one senior on the roster for the Friars this year as a freshman drops that shot in. Lauren Park Lane, her first jumper of the game. Park Lane has been a really impressive freshman for Tony Bazella, just commanding the offense, leads this team in assists, and can score as well. 15 points, four assists, only one turnover in the game on Friday against Creighton. That shot's blocked there on Bristow. Jasmine Smith checking in for Seton Hall. Out of that timeout, as well as Alexia Alish who had her career high eight points on Friday here at Walsh. Yeah, Alish was a big part of that when she came off the bench and was hitting threes, rebounding, and really contributing everywhere. Smith can't get that jumper to fall. And now Providence going back the other way. 
Geary out on the perimeter. Trying to help create some easy looks for this Providence team. Trailing by eight early on here. Now Williams looking to reset the offense with the shot clock under 10. Scott can't find any help as she picks up her dribble. And the shot clock will go off. Tony Vizzello trying to get the crowd fired up right now. He's telling everyone to get up on their feet. And it's a solid defensive possession by Seton Hall. I didn't think Providence did a very good job of reading the defense there and the screen and roll, seeing where the defense went. And they just have to be cautious about getting down into these late shot clock opportunities. Johnson here on the dribble. She has it knocked away, stays alive somehow. And then Williams knocks it out with 12 seconds on the shot clock. And now the two stars in Kayla Webb, as well as Mary Baskerville, will check back in for Providence. 12 seconds on the shot clock for the home team. Seton Hall with the win here today could move into third place in the Big East, up from sixth place. It is a log jam from second to seventh. Right now, Villanova with their victory yesterday, sitting alone in second place. But St. John's, Creighton, and Seton Hall could all have something to say about that today. Williams with the steal. Geary, a mismatch. And on the post, Baskerville back out to Williams, and Williams can't find the mark. Melissa Geary's got to take that shot down low. She had scorer's mentality in that situation. Park Lane misses, knocked down. Johnson with the rebound. Now Samuels an offensive rebound. Baskerville with the block. Olish can't finish and a foul is called. Providence, you see the size advantage they have. They have Fury at 6'4", they have Baskerville at 6'2". There's no excuse to give up three opportunities to Seton Hall. You can't just stand around and look at the ball you have to make contact and box out. And it's not just the two of them, it has to come from the guards as well. Lewis checking back in, as well as Scott. Olish. Redshirt sophomore to Baskin Ridge, New Jersey. Transfer from UMass. Had her first career three-pointer on a buzzer beater to end the first quarter in the last game. She knocks down the second free throw. It's her first free throw make of her Seton Hall career. So this lead starting to stretch a little on Providence. This has been the story for them all years. 10-0 runs, 11-0 runs against them in the middle of games where they've played everyone solid. The other 38 minutes of those games, a huge block there for Samuels on Geary. Shadeen Samuels saying, this is my court. She sent that right into the cheerleaders. Look out. Not a big part of her game, but Samuels, a great athlete. The Big East scoring champion last year, preseason player of the year this year. Final few seconds of the shot clock, and Providence can't get a shot off again. And that time it was Cooper who had the ball stuck in her hands. Right now, Kim, no direction to this offense for Providence. Every situation for them, for the majority of this first quarter, has been desperation shots at the shot clock buzzer. They have to do a better job of getting into their sets and finding a look earlier. Elmore blocked by Geary and misses the second shot. There'll be a loose ball foul on the ground. It looks like it'll go against Cooper. Well, that time, Cooper did block out, but the official is going to say it was a bit excessive. I'm not so sure about that one, but at and you least can, they've made an effort to box out. You can see Jim Crowley talking to Cooper, saying you can't have your arms around your back holding the player behind you. As Samuels hits a three from the corner, and leaves it up there for a little extra emphasis. And that is Shadid's first three of conference play. That is one area where she had been struggling a bit. She has been extending that range, but it hadn't dropped so far in their first 
seven Big East games. And only at eight threes all of last year, but was shooting 33% coming into conference play. As the shot clock's under 10 again, you can hear the energy from the bench for Seton Hall. Three to shoot for Providence. Williams gets it away, but can't get rim. Again, a, a desperation heave at the end of the shot clock. Seton Hall has done a good job of consistently being in their defense as that energy translates to the offensive end. Alexis Lewis knocking down her second three of the afternoon. The fourth of this first quarter for the Pirates. They extend their lead to 15 as the chance of defense rise up at Walsh Gymnasium. Geary gonna go to work against Samuels, picks up her dribble. Williams trying to make something happen. Shot goes up, no rim once again that time from the local Niaja Franklin. Seen all will hold for the final shot of the first quarter here. They have exploded on an 8-0 run to end the quarter. And Park Lane fouled with 1.3 seconds left. Seton Hall has really come out with an off defensive intensity to start this game. Providence, O of their last seven shot attempts. They haven't scored in seven minutes. We talked about offense being a struggle at times for Providence. Now they're gonna have to go back to the drawing board here, Kim, and try and figure something out for this second quarter as Park Lane hits the first free throw. The freshman in her first year on campus has started all 19 games this season for Coach Bazella, won the job in an open competition in the off season. As that will be the final play of the first quarter, a 17 point lead for the home team on alumni day. And the old greats for Seton Hall enjoying what they're seeing so far. We'll be back in just a moment with your second quarter here on the Big East Digital Network. That's got, I think that's a seven, seven. You're watching Seton Hall basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Dr. Martin Luther King had a huge impact on me. He just made me believe no matter what you do, anything is possible. I think the legacy. Stand up, stand up stronger I got the power, gonna raise it up So high, we're shining brighter We got the power, gonna raise it up We got the power, gonna raise it up We're on it and we got to raise it up. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. David Goss and Ken Adams back with you here at Walsh Gymnasium, and we are midway through Big East Conference play, but tickets are already on sale for the postseason tournament, March 6th to 9th at Wintrust Arena in Chicago. You can go to BigEast.com slash WBB tickets to take a look at those and DePaul hosting. And once again, DePaul favorites currently sitting at the top of the standings, nationally ranked for another year. It's been business as usual thus far for Doug Bruno's squad. 6-0, Creighton did give them a good run out in Omaha. And Villanova really has maybe surprised some people. They lost a lot of scoring. Even Harry Peretta wasn't sure what this team would bring. But they're currently 
sitting in second place right now at five and two. Harry Perret in his 42nd year, his final year as head coach of the Villanova Wildcats. And interesting, we were talking to someone with the Providence staff earlier before the game. They said, we are probably the best 0-6 team in Big East history. And you don't want to play this Providence team, but they came out slow in that first quarter. They just can't seem to find a way in conference play to shoot the basketball. Right. This, that first quarter wasn't emblematic of what this team typically looks like. That was a pretty horrific first 10 minutes for them. They usually have some better offensive flow, and yes, they've struggled to score, but usually they work the ball around better, so we'll see if they can adjust coming out of that timeout or at the end of the quarter. That one won't fall for Fatima Ali. Immediately Seton Hall looking to push the other way. Elmore steps into a jumper and knocks it down. The three-pointer for Desiree Elmore. Desiree Elmore is just really settling into her game. She looks smooth, she looks comfortable, and when she catches that ball in rhythm, she's got a great shot of it going in. Only her fifth three-point make of the year, but she has knocked down a lot of long twos as finally a shot falls, this time for Nyasia Franklin. And they're gonna have to look to find some other scoring as leading scorer Mary Baskerville, two fouls in that first quarter. She's on the bench, but Shadeen Samuels, she's off to another hot start, scoring from three and scoring inside. And this is huge for Seton Hall. Samuels, a little bit of an injury early in the year, hasn't really hit the scoring mark or the consistency the way Coach Bazella wanted to see. He felt like she played well against Creighton and a good start here today. Yeah, Shadid's numbers are down a little bit. This year, last year, she averaged 18 points per game to lead the conference, just about 12 this year. But with this team, I don't think she needs to score as much. Gets an easy one, though, there. But just today, it looks like she might be putting up some big numbers, David. Shadid Samuels throwing that one at Kim Adams there. She's already in double digits early in this second quarter. We're gonna step aside for a quick break and we'll be back with more basketball in just a moment. You're watching Providence Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. You have four years to help you figure out the meaning of life. Do you realize what a great gift this is? I think of college as a moment of pilgrimage. You'll go places you never thought you'd go. You'll meet people you never thought you'd meet. And you will experience things that are so rich that you can hold on to them forever. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. Back here on the Big East Digital Network, let's take a look at the week that was Selena Lott with the Big East Player of the Week, her first career Big East Player of the Week award, an offensive explosion for Marquette last week. And Maddie Segrist, Freshman of the Week. She might be Freshman of the Year in the nation the way she's been playing. Yeah, Maddie Segrist, that's her seventh award. Her and Leilani Correa, the only two freshmen to have won that award. But Maddie Segrist and Selena Lott, really two teams that had a lot of question marks coming into the season, and they have kind of answered the bell. Selena Lott after graduating five teammates who scored 1,000 points. And you take a look at the weekly honor roll. Shout out to Kodesha Hoppy who scored her 1,000th career point 
of her St. John's career on a Friday against this Providence team. St. John's going to battle against Creighton on this Sunday afternoon. A lot of action across the Big East, but anyone who tunes in is going to be a little shocked if they take a look right now. 31 to 7, Seton Hall against Providence. Two players for Seton Hall have outscored this Providence team already in this game. Elmore rises up and takes that one. Lee with the miss. And I think, David, we had a, a question for Seton Hall. Was that win on Friday over Creighton, who had been alone in second place, was that sort of a wake-up call to, hey, we could be the second best team in this conference? Well, certainly seemed like Shadid Samuels has awakened. She now has 12 points on the early few minutes of this game. And too easy for her to give her that lane to get to her right hand. That's her third straight layup. And she extends the lead and for Seton Hall. McKenna Hofschild will check in for the first time this game as Alyssa Geary returns to the court for Providence. So if you're the Friars, if you're Coach Jim Crowley, what's been your message in this last time out? What are you looking to do here? Well, you just mentioned it. Shadeen Samuels has walked to the basket on the same play three times. So first of all, you need to make some adjustments defensively. Keeping her in front of you, if she's going to blow by you, you need to send in some help. So a better commitment to team defense and communication needs to be at the forefront before you can even think about finding some better looks offensively. For Jim Crowley, over 300 career wins between his time as St. Bonaventure's coach for 16 years two NCAA appearances and four WNITs. And we mentioned the improvements for Providence last year. It was their best Big East year since 1997. It was their first postseason tournament action in nine years. And then this year they came back a tough non-conference schedule and they played well, nine wins in non-conference. They went out west, they played against New Mexico and Utah. And then they came in a conference play and it's all just gone wrong. Yeah, the offensive Samuels with the staggering. tip in the open court. And Shadeen Samuels pouring it on right now. How dominant has she been? She has a different level of competitiveness today, David. She is fierce. She's going after the ball on both ends, rebounding, scoring. There's a foul called here on the dribble. Elmore going down behind the play. And this is the Samuels that was picked Pete, Big East preseason player of the year. Dominant defensive player, active in passing lanes, can shoot from outside or get to the hole. Absolutely, she was dominant end to end last season. So far to start conference play, a little shaky, a little bit inconsistent, but looking at what she's put together Friday and carrying into this afternoon, tremendous. Offensive foul called against the freshman, Heaven Bristow. As Elmore goes to the floor for the second time, she'll check out after that play. And Femi Funis will come on for the first time here today. Desiree Elmore really showing the ability to move her feet laterally and get into that good position outside the arc. Get in position before Bristow makes her move. Seen Hall. To feed the freshman and a travel call there against Johnson as she changed her pivot foot. Only the second turnover for, of the game for the Pirates. Maybe something this Providence team can build on here, looking for anything midway through this second quarter. You gotta go to, to Mary Baskerville. She's your best offensive player. The travel called back the other way, but they were making an attempt to post Baskerville up there in the middle of the paint. Right, and again, Coach taking a bit of a gamble. She has two fouls, but I think it's a necessity that you have her on the floor right now, and you have to feed it into her every single time down the floor. Baskerville struggling with foul issues early in the season. It's gotten a lot better as Big East play has gone along, but picking up two early ones here today. Samuel's now guarded by Baskerville. Kicks it to the corner for Lewis, and Lewis hits the three! A four-point play for Alexis Lewis, and Seton Hall is on fire. When it rains, it pours, David. Seton Hall absolutely putting the hammer down right now, an offensive explosion, just like we saw on Friday, maybe even 
more so today. Shadeen Samuels with the great find underneath off of her baseline drive. Alexis Lewis really starting to find that three-point shot that Tony Bazella brought her to this program over from Iona for. Iona, one of Coach Bazella's former coaching stops and on Alumni Day, a lot of former VIPs from Seton Hall in the stands and this current team showing off what they're capable of in front of those MVPs. Of course, Sue Adams at home watching as well, so she's getting a show and Seton Hall team, they're sitting on 40 points with six and minutes and 15 seconds left still in the second quarter. I can't believe what we're seeing. They had a 17-0 run to end the quarter. They're currently on a 12-0 run. Eunice ahead to Johnson. Johnson with the mid-range jumper. And right now, Seton Hall just unconscious from the field. The Pirates shooting 56% as a team. Johnson back in transition. Another mid-range jumper, and that one finally misses. 14-0 run over the last three minutes for the Pirates. And right now, Providence can't get anything to go for them. Hofschild into Samuels, and Samuels with another finish! We have now entered the Seton Hall Basketball Clinic. If you paid for a ticket to this game, you also have now gotten admission to a free basketball clinic because Seton Hall is just doing everything right now. They're starting on the defensive end, getting steals. That was a textbook two-on-one break. Hofstrild, the freshman, setting up her teammate perfectly. Samuels now 17 points midway through the second quarter. What a performance. This Seton Hall team, they have forced 11 turnovers so far in this first half. Another turnover there. Smith steps through, misses the layup. A little reprieve there for Providence. The corner three won't fall. Baskerville battling for it. It falls to Williams. And right now Providence, they need to settle down. You can tell they're worked up by this frenetic pace that Seton Hall is created. They need to settle down. Cooper trying to go to work. And she turns it over once again. Lewis in the open court. And she hits the layup. And finally the timeout comes from Jim Crowley as his team is reeling, trailing by 39 in the second quarter. Kim, Providence still has not broken double digits. And we've got four and a half minutes left to play in the second quarter. I mean, I don't, I can't explain what we're, what we're seeing right now. I feel for Providence. This is not easy to take, but Seton Hall, I mean, wow. The energy they brought out, they are really playing together as a team. And it all has started on the defensive end where they have forced 13 Providence turnovers. They have 14 fast break points and 21 points off of turnovers. 21 points off of turnovers to zero for Providence. So often in our job, you try and find the stats to tell the story. 46 to seven kind of explains it itself. And for Seton Hall, they are nine and one when leading at halftime so far this season. And they have been cruising throughout this first half here at home. David Goss and Kim Adams with you on the Big East Digital Network. The Pirates trying to make it back-to-back -back wins. Currently on a 19-0 run in this second quarter. Another jumper can't fall that time for Lee. And Lewis comes down with the rebound. Hofschild running the other way. Lewis the lone starter on the floor right now for the Pirates. Yunus double teamed on the baseline. She falls out of bounds. Lee saves it and into the hands of Geary. And Williams now pushing the other way. Baskerville still on the floor. She had the first five points of the game 
for Providence. Since then, her team has scored two points as Baskerville gets one to fall and draws another foul. And that's what they need to do every time. Obviously, this is a very tough situation for them mentally when there's just been a flurry of scoring from Seton Hall, but right now you need to go back to your bread and butter offensively, which is Mary Baskerville, who has been their most consistent scorer and who could score the easiest on this team. Baskerville hits the free throw, had 12 points in the last game against St. John's with 11 rebounds, averaging over 13 points a game. Last year was the Big East freshman of the year. And her and Kayla Webb, they're the future for Providence. They're two sophomore stars. The Big East all freshman team last year. But learning how hard it is to put the whole team on your shoulders, especially as an underclassman. Shot clock down to five. Hofschild turns, can't get that one to roll in. Funis with the rebound, and she knocks it down and will go to the line for one. Well, David, I was going to say that Hofschild missed turnaround was probably the first thing that has gone wrong for Seton Hall in this game, but what do you know? They get the offensive rebound. Femi Funis, who has really brought some crazy energy off the bench for this Pirate squad, and one, and just everything is going right. Everything they touch is turning to gold right now at Walsh Gymnasium. And this was a Pirates team. They had a strong non-conference. And then Funis, who early on was looking like could be a freshman of the year candidate last year before she tore her ACL. She comes back from injury, just playing about seven minutes per game as Seton Hall looks to build her up. But this is a player that could start for a lot of teams in the conference, and she might be third or fourth in the front court as that three finally falls. The first of the game for Providence. Elmore back in the game. One on one with the freshman Bristow. An offensive explosion here for the Pirates in this first half. Lewis from Steph Curry range can't knock it down. And Providence to try and get some momentum. As Scott misses that one. And this Providence team, they were the second best three-point shooting team in the nation coming into conference play. It's fallen off. They've shot under 30% all but one conference game. What do you make of that? Is that just tired legs? Well, I don't. they don't have many players who can hit it consistently. Really, Kayla Webb is the one, and Kira Spiewak, who's out with an injury. They're desperately missing her today. So right now, I think they're just settling a bit too much from three. Erlet Scott is a much better driver than she is a three-point shooter at this point of her career, and I'd like to see her attack more. And there you see Scott. Shoots it off the dribble rather than trying to get into the lane. And there are two minutes to play in this second quarter, a quarter that saw a 19-0 run for the Pirates. They came into the quarter up 15, and that helped them extend to this 38-point first half lead. Smith into the lane and finishes with the right hand. And Scott, she's been the most aggressive player offensively for Providence. They look to get into their offensive set. Scott, once again. Now Lee will fire from three and hits back iron. There's too many threes right now, David. That's one of seven now for Providence. When you're struggling to score, the last thing you want to do is continue throwing up three-pointers. Get to the free throw line, get some offensive rebounds. Elmore with the jumper. If you're Coach Pizzella, what? how do you message at halftime to your team to not take the foot off the gas? I mean, I think his halftime speech has to be one of the most positive <laughs> in college basketball history. I, what else can you say? Not only have they scored the ball, but they've limited Providence to 13 points. They've rebounded. There's really nothing that you could critique this team for. This is a Providence team that came into the game with a plus rebounding margin on average. And as you've said, Providence only two offensive rebounds so far in this game. Seton Hall plus 12 on the boards. 
plus nine in the turnover margin, and of course, shooting 54% from the field. I mean, they simply have dominated every facet of this game so far. Every facet of this game has been controlled by them, and it's crazy to think coming into this weekend, they were tied for the sixth best team in this conference. I would be a little bit nervous if I'm the other nine teams watching them play Friday and then watching them come out today. This is definitely not the sixth or seventh best team in the conference. The Pirates trying to send a message. They will host their Cross River rival St. John's next week on Sunday evening on national television. And what a week it could be for Seton Hall if they could go 3-0 and with a couple big wins over Creighton and St. John's and do it on national TV in front of the entire conference. Of course, Kim Adams will be with you on that one. As Lewis tries to save that one, but she steps out. So 5.3 seconds left to play in this first half. Seton Hall right now taking care of business. They haven't gone over 100 points in two years. They're on track to do it right now as Williams throws it up off the back iron and like most of that first half doesn't fall for Providence. For Seton Hall, some record setting stuff. 53 points in the first half. A 19-0 run throughout the second quarter and right now Providence sitting on 15 points. Alexis Lewis, 14 points herself. Janine Samuels, 17 more than the entire Providence team. We'll be back in just a moment with first half analysis and second half action here on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching Senior Hall Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. You have four years to help you figure out the meaning of life. Do you realize what a great gift this is? I think of college as a moment of pilgrimage. You'll go places you never thought you'd go. You'll meet people you never thought you'd meet. And you will experience things that are so rich that you can hold on to them forever. Dominating performance in the first half for the home side, the Seton Hall Pirates, and it is a big game in Big East Conference play. And of course, Big East Fast Break is the weekly women's basketball show hosted by Megan Caffrey and Ashley Leotis, breaking down everything in Big East women's hoops. You can catch all new episodes of Fast Break during the season every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. on the Big East Twitter and YouTube pages. On this week's episode, Megan was joined by the reigning Big East Player of the Week, Marquette's Selena Lott. Let's take a look at that right now. The Marquette Golden Eagles are 3-2 in Big East play, coming off of a 2-0 weekend beating St. John's and Seton Hall, as I'm now joined by the Big East Player of the Week, Selena Lott. Selena, your team lost your first two conference games. However, you've now won three straight Big East games. Head coach Megan Duffy said your execution has been different throughout these. What has been the difference in your execution? Um, honestly, it's just determination and we all have to stay humble. Like our teammates, it's like a, a player led team. So our coaches try to stay out of it as much. And then we just had to get an extra work just to be better. 
You had a career high 34 points in your win over St. John's. Offensively, how were you able to have so much production? Honestly, I don't even see it as much as my coaches do. So my coaches like give me highlights of like when I can attack or like whenever I come off on the bench, my coach uh, Skeet will tell me and be like, this is what you have. Like you have your little pull up game, you have the three, you can drive. So I just take her advice whenever. Head coach Megan Duffy also mentioned the fact that this season, a lot of teammates have been stepping up. When you look to your game against Seton Hall on Sunday, Lauren Van Kloon didn't have as much of an offensive game as she usually does. And then you have freshman Cameron Taylor stepping up with her first career double-double. How much is that a testament to what this team is about this season? Yeah, uh, I feel like that's the beauty of our team. Like we all can do different parts and we all have our talents, but... It's just when one's down, one has to step up. So everybody knows their role and just attack it. Selena, just saying it right there, everyone knows their role. What is your role on the team this season? I would just say be more of a vocal leader and like trying to tell people like what positions to be in on defense. And then everybody kind of has the same role. We all tell each other what to do. We just have to take that into consideration. You're one of the upperclassmen this year, and you also come back with a lot of experience. You started on last year's team amongst all of that high-powered talent. How has that experience helped you into this year with the leadership that you have on the court? Um, it definitely has helped because like, I knew like how other teams played and what we had to like look forward to like scouting-wise. But everybody was ready. Who is the funniest on the team? Funniest on the team? Probably Altia. Ooh. Why yeah. is she so funny? She's interesting. She's different. She's so different. She loves to fish. She loves country music. But, like, at the same time, like, I don't know. She'll just always make a side comment that will make you laugh in the wrong times. <laughs> So she loves country music at, at practice, at a home game, on your playlist. Is there at least one country song that we can expect to be on that playlist? Probably not on my playlist, but definitely on hers. <laughs> What's your playlist like? What kind of music we have in that? Um, I listen more of like hip-hop and R&B. Favorite pregame song? Probably Whoa Right Now by Lil Baby. Can you sing it for us a little bit? Oh. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> I can't. I don't I don't know all the lyrics. <laughs> fair. That is very, very fair. <laughs> Selena, thank you so much for joining me. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you. All right, we gotta be all in. All in. All right. We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right. We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah! That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. Timeout, Walsh Gymnasium, the Seton Hall Pirates running all over Providence Friars right now. 53 to 15, looking like they might be on their way to their fifth Big East win of the season. David Goss and Kim Adams with you here. And Kim, as we take a look at these first half highlights, well, they tell the theme of what the first half really was, which is a dominant defensive and offensive performance from the home team. You couldn't ask for a, a much more perfect 20 minutes for Tony Bazella's squad first on 
the scoring. I mean, it's been balanced. Shadeen Samuels has really come alive. She has 17. Alexis Lewis, her second straight outstanding game, 14 points in the hall, shooting 52% for the first half. For this Pirates team, they were able to keep Providence off the board for multiple three minute plus stretches in that first half. You take a look at the stats, plus nine for Seton Hall in the turnover category. They've got second chance points. They've scored from inside and out. They've done it all. Yeah, they've forced turnovers, 13 turnovers for Providence. And just, you see Samuels again, seven for seven from the field. She has not missed yet. And they, her team has held Providence to just 20% shooting in that first 20 minutes. A day to remember so far for the Pirates, but we're not done yet. This Providence team will come out fighting in this second half. What can Seton Hall do to try and maintain this momentum? We'll be back in just a moment with all your second half action coming up here on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching Providence Women's Basketball on Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Big East Conference men's and women's basketball teams in recognition of the incomparable impact that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had made in his quest for national unity and social justice are wearing shooting shirts before the game today and this whole weekend that say we cannot walk alone. You can hear now from the student athletes on the impact Dr. King has made on their lives. The Big East Conference and member schools champion excellence by embracing respect and diversity while striving for a culture of inclusion and equity. Be inclusive. Be inclusive. Dr. Martin Luther King had a huge impact on me. He just made me believe no matter what you do, anything is possible. I think the legacy that he put in place means a lot to me because I always think about where we came from as people of color, as athletes of color, and I just try to make sure that whatever I'm doing now in the present is going to set up those for the future. Being in the Big East is so diverse. Being at DePaul University is so diverse. So to come along and to share our talents is one of the messages that Martin Luther King shared with us, that we can't all come together and be as one. His willingness to sacrifice himself and you know fight for others, that goes a long way for the future and anybody who wants to stand up for, for change and equality. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. 
The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room, people, for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. Seton Hall Pirates hosting the Providence Friars here on this cold and snowy Sunday afternoon. And the Pirates have heated it up here at home, shooting over 50% from the field in the first half. David Goss and Ken Adams with you for this one. Kim, let's start with how impressive a performance that was in the first half for the home side. Well, coming into this one, Tony Bazella was questioning can his team come out strong? Can they put together two solid games? And I think they have very resoundingly answered that question, yes, unless a disaster was to occur in this next 20 minutes. But I think we're seeing how dangerous this team can be when they are dialed in on both ends, when they are getting scoring from everyone, and when the preseason player of the year is playing like the preseason player of the year, Shadeen Samuels. Shadeen Samuels, 17 points in the first half. She'll start the second half here alongside Desiree Elmore, Barbara Johnson, Lauren Park Lane, and Alexis Lewis as Mary Baker Baskerville goes in for the basket. She will start on the floor with Cooper, Bristow, Scott, and Webb for the Providence Friars. So a good early start for the home team, or for the away team. Elmore immediately goes to the basket. She gets fouled. We've seen Elmore on the floor quite a few times already in this game, but showing she plays with that little extra tenacity. She does, and she really got in great physical shape over the summer, changed her fitness level, and I think we're seeing, seeing that in her game, her ability to really attack, really elevate on her jump shot, get up and down the floor, defend. I asked the coaching staff what the secret was because I thought I'd use it and they said, no, it's just being healthy and working hard. Uh, Wasn't an option for me. I thought maybe there'd be like, you know, a secret one, just eat celery every day and it all works out for you. I'm pretty sure she wasn't eating the ice cream cookie sandwiches that <laughs> I had for dessert last night. I thought you were gonna say for breakfast. That would I have mean, been a lot worse. I'm, I would be down for that for breakfast, no doubt. Jump ball here as Webb and Johnson get tied up. Kim put you on the spot. Do you remember a time playing? Of course, your great career at UPenn, being down roughly 37, 40 points in a first half? Unfortunately, probably more games like that than when we were winning. Um, so I can definitely sympathize with what this feels like right now for Providence. They're a team that has been searching for that first win and then just to come across a Seton Hall team who is really coming into its own. Um, was a, a, a tough 20 minute start for this young team, but you can see they're coming out with energy. They look more focused on defense right now. So we'll see if they can just get some confidence back, get a little bit more rhythm back for this final 20 minutes. Samuels draws the foul there on Cooper, but you mentioned it. So far for Providence, they're 0 6 in Big East play, but five of the six Big East losses have been by 10 points or less. The only one was DePaul, who has beaten everyone in conference play. So 
They've played pretty much up to their level outside of one or two big mistakes in most of their games. They were tied at halftime against St. John's in the last game, had a lead in the third quarter. They led Creighton entering the fourth quarter in the game before that, only trailed for the first time with two and a half minutes left. So this hasn't been indicative of what Providence has been this year, even though they're without a win. Right, this is this is uncharacteristic. They've never been down big like this. They just kind of hit a perfect storm in Seton Hall, but this is a team, like you said, they, they could have won at Creighton, who at the time was second in the conference, had only lost to DePaul. So today, we'll see if they can cut back, but this might be a real learning experience, go back to the tape. But they have been competitive with just about every team in the conference outside of this afternoon. Elmore with the steal, Park Lane missing the floater. Lewis can't follow it up. And now Providence going back the other way. Kayla Webb stuck on the bench months, much of the first half. As now Samuels is able to break through and get her 20th point of the game. And we've still got eight minutes left in the third quarter. And David, that, that can't happen if you're Providence. You're down this big, you turn it over and then one person hustled back. Seton Hall had a three on one break. That sort of stuff is inexcusable, regardless of what the score is. Sadine Samuels, last time she broke 30 points was a year ago against Creighton with 32. Seton Hall player has never scored more than 40 points in a game. Just throwing that out there real quick. It's been a brighter start to this second half though for this Providence team. Now going toe to toe as Lewis lines up another three. So 18 in the last game, her Seton Hall career high. She's got 17 so far here today. And how about Alexis, who was four of eight from behind the arc. That was some nice cross screening action. And if you're Providence, you can't leave her alone. She, she had already knocked down three. She's looked really good from behind the arc. I would almost stay attached to her, not really help off of her. Baskerville with the good touch pass, blocked by Elmore. And that's kind of how it's gone today, David. That was a beautiful pass for Baskerville. It looked like it was going to be a highlight real play, and then Desiree Elmore out of nowhere getting it done on both ends this afternoon. One of the things Coach Bazella talked to you about before the game was using the ability of Samuels and Elmore to stretch the bigs defensively for Providence. That seems to be the way the game's played out as another shot clock violation for Providence. Yeah, Desiree Elmore and Shadeen Samuels, they may be undersized in some games in the post, but they can really create mismatches because they can pull the other team's post defenders out, and they both have the quickness to take you off the dribble or to pull up from mid-range. Alice checking in for Elmore. As Samuels coming across the lane. Tough finish there, won't fall. And Scott. Back the other way, Williams shows off her handles but can't complete the play. Now when it, Williams, I would just take that. Coach actually, Coach just signaling her jump stop, jump stop. She got in the air and then had nowhere to go. She was so close to the rim at that point, just take the layup. She's one of the quickest players in this league off the dribble. And for Providence, Kayla Webb still on the bench now, back on the bench as Johnson tries to sneak in gets fouled and will go to the line. What do you make of this game, this day here for Kayla Webb, one of the stars of this team, 0 for 1 from the field, has only played 10 minutes so far in this game. Yeah, I would try and work her back in. Um, as, as far as we know, we don't think she's battling any sort of injury, but she really, she and Baskerville have been their consistent scorers in Big East play. Um, she's their point guard. She gets them into their offense. Chanel Williams is out there right now, or let Scott gives a little bit of a different look, but I would like to see Webb get back in there. She can hopefully start knocking down a little bit from outside, put some more pressure on the defense. Heaven Bristow coming back in here, the freshman, her first start of her college basketball career, a player that you are very excited about in the Big East. Yeah, I think she has a, a tremendous upside. I think she's still learning the system here, but anytime she comes in the game, she makes something happen. Oh, Heaven making me look good right there. Thank you, Heaven. 
But she's she only averages 10 minutes a game in Big East play, but she's their second leading rebounder. She can really attack the glass. She averaged a, more than 20 rebounds per game as a senior in high school, 20 she, and 20. She led New York City in rebounding. She gets called for the foul on the block attempt there. But Bristow, the Brooklyn, New York native. Seton Hall wanted her to come on campus to visit to try and recruit her, but she signed an early letter of intent to go to Providence. So for the Pirates, a little chance for them to see what they're missing out on. And on the flip side, for her to see what she's missing out on as well. As Bristow now comes off, and we'll talk to Coach Crowley. Or Heaven Bristow. That was her second basket of the game, but that's her fourth personal foul. Samuels misses the free throw. I like Samuels' lime green shoes. Those are nice, and she's a player that can really get up and down the floor quick, so it's like a blur, like an incredible Hulk or something when she's running by with those. And if you're gonna wear shoes like that, that means you wanna be seen, you have to step up. <laughs> 21 points so far isn't a bad way to, to show up. Yeah, you can't be like those those dudes at the park who show up with all the <laughs> freshest gear and then they go 0 of 20 from the from the court. Or be the off the bench grinder who gets two points and a rebound, but like <laughs> made the hard screen in the right cut. You don't get to wear the neon shoes. Yeah, but you're in the new balances for that role. Hey, don't knock the wide foot. Come on. Come on, Kim. No, I, I actually wore New Balance as a college, so I, I had some uh, injuries, and then I, I had to wear the New Balances. So Kawhi, I mean, Kawhi Leonard wears yeah. New Balance now. They're, they're on the, the uptick. And if they'd like to be on the faster uptick, we can get you Kim Adams' address. You can send some free stuff over. She'll mention you on every broadcast. I will never turn down a free pair of sneakers. I love sneakers. Give Sneaker me an head. estimate. How many in the closet? Well, I've been trying to limit a little bit of my spending in the last year or two, but I probably have like five recent pair of Jordans in rotation. Um, some nice like Nike Air Maxes. Samuel's there with the lay-in. Off the back of that Air Max conversation, the greatest shoe of all time. Shadeen Samuels continuing to put on a show in the lime green. Hall, of course, in their home white jerseys here on Alumni Day. What a show it's been for their former players. Park Lane looks like she is going to be the next generation, just a freshman, as Samuels is blocked by Baskerville. Providence trying to get back into an offensive floor. And Baskerville with the lay-in. Mary Baskerville, she's in double digits. The sole member of Providence in double digits. She has 14 of the team's 25 points. And right there in that sequence, you saw how talented she could be and how she can impact the game. She started the play on the block with the block on Samuels, then sprinted down to get the nice finish and transition. She's a player who can get it done on both ends. Johnson now trying to go to work. The offhand layup, it won't fall. Williams immediately the other way. Samson, shot fake, and she takes the step and the travel. And those are just some of the plays that have killed this team, David, as we're getting ready to head to a break here. But just those unforced turnovers can happen when you're down this big. Seton Hall still leading big, up 40. We'll be back in just a moment with all of your action here on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching Providence Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. You have four years to help you figure out the meaning of life. Do you realize what a great gift this is? I think of college as a moment of pilgrimage. You'll go places you never thought you'd go. You'll meet people you never thought you'd meet. And you will experience things that are so rich that you can hold on to them forever. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. 
I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room, people, for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. We are midway through conference play right now. Seton Hall looks like they might be on their way to their fifth victory and they spot at third place in the standings. But tickets are already on sale for the Big East postseason tournament once again at Wintrust Arena in Chicago. The ball will host from March 6th to March 9th. Tickets on sale at BigEast.com slash WBB tickets. And you don't want to miss that one. It is going to be fascinating, Kim, because Got to Paul, 15th in the nation, they're up there. But then you look at the rest of the standings, basically two through seven, and no one knows who's really gonna stand out from that group. No, and I mean, you watch this Seton Hall team this weekend, and how talented they could be when they put all the pieces together, and you'd have to think this is a team that, that could challenge the Paul, who really has only had one close game so far, and that was Creighton out in Omaha a couple weekends ago. Other than that, they've been cruising, but you have to think the amount of talent that Seton Hall has, when they combine that talent with effort and energy, I'd like to see them go full strength at DePaul. The third foul there on the leading scorer, Baskerville for Providence means she'll have to come off here for a couple minutes. and. For Seton Hall, of course, and Tony Bazzella's time, two Big East postseason championships, so they have challenged DePaul when they've been at their best, but the question is, can they be consistent enough in a one-game knockout competition like the postseason tournament to get to the final and then challenge DePaul in Chicago? Right, and when you and when you get to DePaul, you, just, you have to be so committed to defending because they have so many weapons, just like we're seeing today from Seton Hall, but any player who comes into that game off the bench can shoot the three. So you have to be so dialed in defensively to have a chance against the ball. So the foul here will go against Hofschild, who tried to take a charge. Williams had lost the basketball, but the contact still occurred. So the foul will go against the Pirates, the third team foul. Has to be pointed out for Seton Hall, they lost at DePaul by 17 points. The one time they've faced off so far this season. They will, of course, host DePaul here in South Orange on February 9th, the game that they'll be looking forward to. We mentioned it earlier, one game next weekend for the Pirates. It's against the cross river rival St. John's. That one on national TV, 6.30 p.m. on FS1. And David, that, that one will be a treat because it's actually the Fox Sports All Access game. So we know, uh -oh. as Alyssa Geary knocks down a three, we personally know how passionate and enthusiastic Tony Bazella is. And now the entire country will have a chance to find out because he will be mic'd up for the entire game, as will St. John's coach Joe Tartamella. That is must watch stuff. I've covered sports for about 10 years now. I've never interviewed anyone quite like Tony Bazella. And of course, getting famous for his jacket tossing and his floor slapping. Steph I remember uh, my first year working for the Big East Digital Network. I did a halftime interview with Tony where he just destroyed his team and was just disgusted at the performance they had. And uh, that's still to this day one of my favorite, maybe the favorite interview I've ever done. I was pull it up for a lap, but man, his team came out with a different energy in the second half. You probably could have played better in the second half after the interview. I was fired up. <laughs> I was ready to, to break out the jersey. And he is a man that runs on energy, of course, one of the great coaches in the tri-state area's history, coaching out on Long Island for a number of years before heading to Iona for 10 years, and then 
returning to his alma mater in Seton Hall. We mentioned two NCAA tournament appearances for Coach Bazell in his eight years here at Seton Hall. As Hallschild, the freshman, knocks that one down. And Femi Funis off the bench, bringing that energy, the offensive board. You mentioned she had missed some time earlier in the season, rehabbing from an injury to last season. And Coach Bazella loves her and is excited about the potential, and she's showing that this afternoon. Beautiful job step there from Geary. This is a big game for a player like Funis to get some minutes to get herself back into the rhythm of the Big East game. Barbara Johnson steps through off the pump fake. Elmore trying to come down with the rebound. Williams comes away with it, and she's off and running. Lee back up to Williams. Swung wide, and it was Widmeyer with the attempt there. And then the mental mistake for Seton Hall gives Providence the ball back as the Pirates will check in number 33, Kayla Harris, a freshman out of Shadeen Samuel's hometown of Ossining, New York. And an opportunity for Kayla Harris to check in here with a big lead. This is just her ninth appearance of the year. And there you have it, Kayla Webb. She spent a, a lot of time on the bench right away, first shot. Knockdown three, she's one of the, the best shooters in the conference, shooting from three at 41% this season. And with a minute and a half left in the third quarter, that's her first basket, the second leading scorer on the team. And Hofschild answers, she's got back-to-back -back threes. Look at the answer, and another three this time for Providence. A big make from Lauren Simpson, a freshman out of Walmouth, Massachusetts. And all of a sudden, we've got a three-point shooting competition going on, David. As Funis gets into the lane, we kind of thought it might be this way. Seton Hall attempts one of the highest amounts per game in the conference in Providence. We said the leading three-point shooting team in the conference, and finally the Friars have gotten going. Wow, and yeah, that is, that's the three-point shooting team that Providence was known for earlier in the season. Multiple players that could catch and shoot, knock it down. Funis trying to be aggressive. Webb gets it forward for Lee, and Lee lays it in. So a nice little run for Providence. A 6-0 run here over the last minute. They the cut the lead down of, to 33. The impact of Kayla Webb. She knocked down the shot right away that time, getting the high outlet and getting her team out in transition for an easy one. The Pirates are going to hold here for the final possession of this third quarter. It was an even third quarter. Providence has led the quarter by two points now after the three by Lewis. Lewis breaks her Seton Hall career high from Friday with 20 points so far in this game, stretching the lead back to 36 points as we enter the fourth quarter of play. We'll be back in just a moment with more basketball here on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching Seton Hall Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. 
I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. David Gossin, Kim Adams with you here on the Big East Digital Network. A 77-41 lead for Seton Hall over Providence at home. But Providence winning the third quarter, scoring margin, a much improved performance from them. Yeah, they put up 26 points in that third quarter after just 15 combined points of the first half. So you really have to credit that team for how they came out of the locker room, credit the coaching staff for getting them up, and credit this young group because – like I said, I've been in those situations before as a player, and it's it's not easy to come back from that. And you could easily throw in the towel at that point and move on to the next game. So we saw the Providence team that we saw what they're capable of and what they've been playing like all throughout Big East play is every game they've been in has been a tough one. That was just a, a really uncharacteristic first half, but really proud of the resiliency they showed. Taylor Webb's been a big part of that late in that third quarter. Geary there will get called for the travel as she shifts pivot feet. But Webb strong off the bench in the third quarter and the second leading scorer on this team had been shut out until the midway point of that third quarter. So now for this Providence team, Webb will lead them out here in to start this fourth. Fatima Lee as well on the floor with Geary. Widmeyer, as well as Sampson. Kayla Harris checking in for the first time this game late in that third quarter. Down low alongside Lexia Alish. Park Lane returning in the backcourt with Johnson and Jasmine Smith. And we have to mention, one of the leading scorers on Seton Hall, Maya Jackson, injured, not even dressed to play today. And Seton Hall still has 77 points. Right, and she, wow, I was just going to comment on the three-point shooting. There is one from Alexia Olesh. How about the three-point shooting for this team, David? So coming into this weekend, coming into the Creighton game on Friday, in their four prior games, they had shot 19 of 80 from three, 24%. They had nine threes against Creighton, and now they have 11 here. So... They have 23s in the last two games, and they had 19 in their previous four. For Seton Hall, it has been a strong performance so far. How can they finish, though? Can they break 100 points for the first time in over a year? We'll find out in just a moment here on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching Providence Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. You have four years to help you figure out the meaning of life. Do you realize what a great gift this is? I think of college as a moment of pilgrimage. You'll go places you never thought you'd go. You'll meet people you never thought you'd meet. And you will experience things that are so rich that you can hold on to them forever. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. A big lead right now for the Seton Hall Pirates as we enter the fourth quarter. David Goss and Kim Adams with you. Let's take a look at what's upcoming for these teams. For Providence, it's been road heavy throughout the year. They've only played four home games, but they will return home next week to start off Friday against Butler and then play Xavier on national TV on Sunday. That's going to be a huge weekend for them. If all continues on trend here, they will be 0-7 in Big East play. Xavier just 1 of 5 entering today, so that's a great opportunity to be back at home, to play against a team that's struggling as well. That's a must-win game in my in my mind. And on the flip side for Seton Hall, versus St. John's here at Walsh Gymnasium, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday night on Fox Sports 1. 
Kim, that's as big a game as they're going to have. And that's their only game next weekend. They then travel to Georgetown and Villanova the following weekend. And that's going to be a fun one here next Sunday night. Both teams playing well. St. John's nearly had DePaul knocked off in Chicago last weekend. And then a, a late game surge for the Blue Demons. And it's always a tough matchup between St. John's and Seton Hall. So many players that know each other so well from growing up around here who want to win that game so bad. How about that men's game yesterday? Yep. Seton Hall, St. John's at the Garden. Miles Powell really putting on a big time show in the second half to will his team back and get the win. Seton Hall men's team continues to rack up victory 6-0 in conference play. Miles Powell may be putting in a bid for a national player of the year, not just Big East player of the year with the way he's performed. Scored his 2,000th career point in that game. Yeah, big, big time scorer. Love watching him play. And absolutely a front runner, I think, for a national player of the year. Offside back out to Johnson for Seton Hall. This women's basketball program, they've been a shining light for years. Under Coach Bazella, right now, he felt like this was a critical weekend to see what direction his team was going to go in down the stretch. We all know you go through the, C the Big East schedule once, the second time around is when things get tough. And for the Pirates, they seem to be going into it in the perfect style and form. Well, it was a critical weekend, as you said, learning about, you know, what is our identity, how good can we be, and also a critical weekend for the standings. We mentioned they came into Friday's game at Creighton in a tie for sixth place with St. John's, and a win today could put them as high as third and just a half a game out of second behind Villanova, who only played one game this week and a win over their travel partner, Georgetown, yesterday. And, of course, Friday, win over Creighton, Put you in good spot in terms of head-to-head. -head. A victory over St. John's next week would go even further on that road for the Pirates. As you start to think early about seeding and where things stand, and as we've mentioned a few times right now, a jumble between two and seven. So every single standings, every buy, anything you can get going into Big East play is going to be, or Big East tournament play is going to be huge for every team. Right, and Seton Hall last year, they had to play on that first day. They were seventh place in the conference. So that's really the thing that coaches want to make sure they set themselves up is just trying to avoid having to play in that first round game, the 7-10 or the 8-9 matchup. And Seton Hall, they lost six of their seven conference games to end the year last year. So they need to make sure they stay the course and find that consistency as we're seeing this weekend. Now Alexis Lewis and Barbara Johnson transfers last year weren't available to play. And Johnson shows her a little bit of what she can bring this year. She's a, a good combo scorer who can get you buckets in tough moments. Yeah, and I talked to Coach Bazella earlier in the season when they played UConn, and he had some interesting things to say about Barbara Johnson as another blocking foul called against the Pirates. But he actually tried to recruit Barbara Johnson when she was coming out of high school. And at the time, she wasn't academically eligible or didn't have the grades to get here. And then when he began to recruit her again, he said she was very quiet. She, they didn't have great conversations on the phone. But he said since she's come here, she has become one of his favorite athletes that he has ever coached. He loves what she brings to the culture of his program. Her experience with the Canadian national team has given her some high-level basketball. She went from Chipola College as a freshman to Ole Miss. Played in 31 games for Ole Miss. And of course, sitting out last year as a transfer and showing you a little bit of what she's capable of. Can't get that one to fall. But Coach Mazzell has been successful with transfers. And Asia Simmons, of course, helping him win a Big East championship. Shakina Richardson as well. It looks like he has done it once again with Desiree Elmore, with Barbara Johnson, and of course, Alexis Lewis on this group as well. Offschild, six points so far in this game. And Smith can't get that one to fall. 
What's interesting about this Seton Hall group is it's not just the upperclassmen transfers. You've got, we mentioned Maya Jackson, a freshman, Park Lane, a freshman, and Femi Funis, just a sophomore. They're going to be the building blocks with Hofschild going forward that Coach Pazella can bring talent into. Yeah, I mean, I think some of the freshmen on this Seton Hall team have been overshadowed a little bit because they don't have to do as much as a player like Maddie Seagrass is doing, who's, you know, putting up a incredible numbers, but I think these Seton Hall freshmen, Park Lane, Maya Jackson, who's out, even Hofschild has stepped in here. These are some really solid freshmen that you can count on, and they have played big roles, they've played big minutes, and like I said, I think they've been overshadowed a little bit. There's only been two freshmen who have won the award so far, Seagrass and Correa from St. John's, but if there was an honor roll for <laughs> freshman of the week, these players would be on it every single week. Park Lane, 15 points, four assists, and just one turnover against Creighton in the last game. So maybe, as a shot at it this week, was a five-time all-conference player in high school. Which is really hard to do when you only go to high school for four years. Shows you how talented she is, the expectations she has, and how excited Seton Hall is. She's a Wilmington, Delaware native. Not exactly a basketball hotbed, but of course, Elena Deladon's from there, so anything can happen. The reigning WNBA champion and MVP. Got to spend some time with Elena this summer covering the WNBA, incredible player and person as well. She, she would push you towards Nike, so don't bring up New Balance around there. Yeah, Elena actually had a really incredible shoe this year um, that she designed with Nike with people in, with people in mind who have disabilities like her sister. Uh, it's a shoe that you actually don't have to tie and it's very easy for people with disabilities to put on that shoe. So incredible stuff that she does off the court as well. And we've talked a little bit about what athletes can do to affect our communities here on MLK Weekend. And of course, Elena Deladon, not just a great player, but a great human being and a leader in the United States. Of course, you can see her continue on with the WNBA this season and might be joined in the future by a player like Ashidine Samuels, a couple of players in the Big East that could be putting their names in the WNBA draft coming forward. That's a huge block from Heaven Bristow. The freshman showing a little bit what she's capable of to take us to the media timeout. So for a Providence team struggling in the first half, they are now plus two in the second half. Tied 7-7 here in the fourth quarter. We'll be back in just a moment with more action here on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching Seton Hall Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. David Goss and Kim Adams here at Walsh Gymnasium. This is the 69th all-time meeting between the Seton Hall and Providence women's basketball team. And the last four had been single-digit differences. 
I don't think we're going to see that here again today, but it's been a much improved second half for the Providence Friars in what has been an offensive explosion here today. Right, this is the second straight game that Seton Hall has just come out and absolutely scorched the Nets from the start of the game. Hofschild with her third three of the game. Wow, this Pirates team now 12 of 21 from three-point land, 57%. Hofschild dying to draw a charge here. And a second time gets called for the blocking foul. But Kim, it hasn't just been the stars in Chidin Samuels and in Baskerville. It has been everyone here today getting on the scoreboard. Right, they're close to having five players in double figures right now. Lewis and Samuels have 20 or more. Johnson has 10. Hofschild nine, Elmore nine. Just a complete team effort. Let's see how many assists they have. 17 assists, really sharing the ball this afternoon. 37 point lead right now for the Pirates. 19 players between the two teams have scored in this one. That's almost every player available here today. Now we just need to get out there and get a layup I was about own. to say. I'll drive, I'll kick to you in the corner. That works, I'll knock down the three. Smith with the bank shot here on a Sunday afternoon. You can see the smile on her face watching that one go down. And there's a lot of smiling from Seton Hall players in this game and Tony Bazella said to us, I think we're having fun after that game as Heaven Bristow, the impressive freshman, knocks it down. But Tony was interested how they would carry the momentum of that impressive Friday win over Creighton and I would argue that they've been even more impressive in this game, David. So now what does the next week look like? What does practice look like? What's the tone, what's the tempo with no game next Friday and a big game against St. John's on Sunday? Right, I mean, it's gonna be a big week of preparation. You don't play until Sunday. That'll give you maybe a day or two to take some time off physically, rest a little bit. But I think there has to be a nice mix in practice between feeling loose, feeling confident, having fun, yet also having a sharp focus at a big opportunity that's ahead on Sunday against a tough St. John's team, against a rival, national TV. So I think just carrying this momentum, keeping that confidence, and then just getting back to work, being dialed in on the scout, and what could be sharper, if anything, could be sharper after this game, I'm not sure. Victoria Keenan checks in for the first time, the freshman at Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, her 10th appearance of the year. For Seton Hall, it's one of those where you don't want that day off when you're playing like this, right? You want games, you want to keep taking shots, you want to keep getting out there. Yeah, Tony Bazella might be calling a 6 a.m. practice at this <laughs> rate. I mean, his team had a, an 11 a.m. tip on Friday. That seemed to work well for them. So Tony might just keep it rolling right through the week, but I guess there are some NCAA regulations <laughs> that require you to take a day off. Providence here, a strong second half for them to build off of with that doubleheader next weekend against Butler and Xavier. Right, and I think that was important for them to really buckle down at halftime and say that was as abysmal as it gets, but we're not going to throw in the towel. Really impressed by how they responded, and, and you just said it. Next week it's a big opportunity for a sweep for a team that's still trying to find that first conference win. And we mentioned it, but Heaven Bristow, eight points, second leading scorer on the team, and it's games like this when the game breaks down where you see the character, the pure skill of players. Bristow showed a little bit of what you've seen all year, which is her potential to be a star in this conference. Right, and she's starting to get some more minutes. I think she's starting to gain the trust of her coaching staff, uh, but she just brings a raw athleticism she can jump out of the gym. She attacks, as we see right now. You can hope for Providence to maybe see either Kira Spiewak or Olivia Orlando return next week, and that would give a little bit more juice to that bench for Coach Crowley. That one saved, but off the hands of Harris. Harris goes in and gets the basket. Kayla Harris, the 20th player to score a basket here in this game. 
You love to see it. The bench is into it. The fans are into it. I got a shout out. Dan Ricky, her high school coach, Shadeen's coach. Good, uh, good friend that I went up against. Ossining White Plains battles back in the day. Maybe he's tuned in. You went deep cut on that one. <laughs> Shadeen Samuels coming in as a freshman from Austin and has put on a show. And now, the three for Keenan. So every single player that was dressed here today for Seton Hall has a basket. And the crowd loving it here. It doesn't look like they'll break 100, but it won't matter. A dominating performance for the home side start to finish here for the Pirates. It'll go down as one of their best wins of the season. As Aulish steps in and hits a three. And maybe I spoke too soon, 97 points here for the Pirates. This is unbelievable. Now, 14 threes for the Pirates. The rim could not be bigger for them right now. Seton Hall shooting into the Atlantic Ocean right now. They are loving it. Right now, they are just a hair under 50% from the field for the game at 49.3. They are shooting 61% from Coach, behind the arc. Coach Bazella is showing some good sportsmanship here, saying hold the ball as much as this building would explode if they hit the century mark. Alumni day, a lot of former greats in the building for the Seton Hall Pirates women's basketball team. And they put on a show for that group, Kim. One of the best performances of the year off the back of that Creighton win. What a day for Seton Hall. What a weekend. What This is a, a season-changing weekend for them. I think it shows them that they can be the best team in this conference. Obviously, you, you can't say that with 100% confidence yet because you do have to beat DePaul. But I mean, the talent on this team is apparent. and when they bring it and when they play together, I like I like this team's chances. A huge win for Seton Hall. We'll be back in just a moment with their leading scorer, Shadeen Samuels, here on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching Seton Hall basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah! That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. You have four years to help you figure out the meaning of life. Do you realize what a great gift this is? I think of college as a moment of pilgrimage. You'll go places you never thought you'd go. You'll meet people you never thought you'd meet. And you will experience things that are so rich that you can hold on to them forever. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. 
The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. Voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. You have four years to help you figure out the meaning of life. Do you realize what a great gift this is? I think of college as a moment of pilgrimage. You'll go places you never thought you'd go. You'll meet people you never thought you'd meet. And you will experience things that are so rich that you can hold on to them forever. And Kim Adams with you here still on the Big East Digital Network. Joined by the leading scorer from today, Shadeen Samuels, 23 points, six rebounds, but as a team, 97 points. You guys shot 50% from the field. What was the feeling coming into this game? What was that experience like? We knew we just had to come in here with a lot of energy. Um, we couldn't underestimate Providence. And after the road games against DePaul and Marquette, you know, we tried to up our game and focus a lot in practice. So that was the main uh, focus during the week. And Shadeen, you mentioned that road swing where you guys had two losses. And coming into this weekend, you were three and three, and then two resounding wins. What sort of, what does that do? What does this weekend do for your team moving forward? Um, it helps a lot. It gives a lot of people confidence, um, especially when we're up and a lot of our players get to play that don't get a lot of minutes. It helps them gain their confidence. And like it just makes everyone feel good. The energy is amazing. So it just makes things a lot better. Yeah, you mentioned the teammates. You had 23, Alexis had 20, and then every other player on your team that came in scored today. How dangerous can your team be when, when the ball is being shared like that and everyone's scoring? Honestly, like this is one of the most talented teams that I've played on. So just being able to see everyone get in the game, score a basket, it's like, it feels good knowing that, you know, not one player, not two players have to do all the work that you know, like, I could take a break and my teammates will hold it down when they get on the court. We don't want you to forget about and not enjoy this, but <laughs> next week, St. John's National TV, the one yep. game is your fourth time. You know what it means to play against St. John's. Mm -hmm. What do you guys need to do? What's going to be the mindset this week going into um, that game? Honestly, St. John's is a great team, but I believe if we come out and play like we did against Providence and Creighton, that we'll have a great game. And honestly, you know, if we have fun, have the same energy, things will be great. Smiles all around Walsh Gymnasium yep. for Gene Samuels, for Tony Bazella and everyone else. Thanks so much for joining us here today. A dominating performance, 97-55 victory for Seton Hall. That's all for us here on the Big East Digital Network.